So does this comment, Acts 15, and one of your other comments on Colossians 2, prove that the Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath, is abolished? Let's dive right in. So starting at what is probably the most taken out of context and twisted scripture regarding the Sabbath, Colossians 2. Paul says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So whatever Paul is talking about here was nailed to the cross, abolished, we no longer observe it. But what's he talking about? Many people jump right to the Sabbath and say, see, we don't have to keep the Sabbath anymore. But again, context, let's look at it. He continues, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Now, he goes on to say, Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of a holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So there's some major, major clues here as to what Paul is talking about. Number one, handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. And then Paul lists a whole litany of things. In the ceremonial law, there was the various meat laws that the priests had to follow. There was also the drink laws. There was the holy days, which there were seven holy days throughout the year. There was the new moon. And there were Sabbath days. What's Paul talking about here? The feasts, anciently of Israel, were called Sabbath days. This is not the weekly Sabbath here. We'll get into that a little bit further, but for now, let's look at some other texts. So what was that stuff that was against us? In Deuteronomy 31.26, the Bible gives us the answer. Always let the Bible explain itself. Never take it out of context to prove what you want to believe. Let it explain itself. Deuteronomy 31.26 Take this book of the law, put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness, what? Against thee. This is the book of Moses, the law of Moses, the ceremonial law. And it was placed in the side of the Ark. Why is that significant? Because the Ten Commandments, also known as the Testimony of the Lord, was put inside the Ark, according to Exodus 25, 16. The only other two items put inside the Ark of the Covenant was Aaron's rod that budded, signifying who God had chosen to spiritually lead his people, and the pot of manna, signifying Jesus, the bread of life. Paul says the same thing here in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 4, the Ten Commandments were placed inside the Ark. Now here in Galatians 3.19, Paul says that the law was added because of sin. Which law? Because remember, as we've seen so far, there are the Ten Commandments and there's the ceremonial law. Those are two different laws. Now if you look at the context of Galatians, what was going on was that Paul had been there, he had set up the church, he had said, hey guys, you are saved by grace. And they're like, yeah, awesome. But as always happens, Satan had his servants coming along behind Paul, and, and in the case of Galatia, they had convinced the Galatians that you still had to keep the law of Moses. Which is why Paul started off with some very strong words. Paul here is telling us that the ceremonial law was added because of sin. And we see this in Genesis chapter 3 when God had to slay a lamb to show them how the sacrificial system was going to work and to make them coats of skin to cover their nakedness. Before sin, there was no need of taking life. There was no need of sacrificing the lamb to point forward to what Jesus would do because sin had not happened yet. But when sin happened in Genesis chapter 3, God showed Adam and Eve how to do the sacrificial system, the need to sacrifice the lamb to point forward to Jesus, and that's what Paul is saying here, that that law was added because of sin. Now, the law was added because of sin, the ceremonial law. But notice here, we see the Sabbath at the very end of creation week. Now remember, the Sabbath is the fourth of the Ten Commandments, but here, the Sabbath appears before sin ever happened. The weekly Sabbath is not part of that law that Paul mentioned that was added because of sin. This is part of the eternal Ten Commandments. In fact, many Christians claim that the Ten Commandments weren't given until Exodus chapter 20. But notice, Exodus chapter 16, God is saying, How long are you guys going to refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? People had already broken the Sabbath, and God was telling them, Look guys, this is, this is not okay. Now when Jesus was born as a human and became our Messiah, he said this, if you love me, keep my commandments. Meaning if we're just going to make excuses to disobey him, to claim that his law was abolished, we don't love him. According to John 15, 
if we make those excuses to disobey him, we're not his friends. We're only his friends if we do what he commands us. And we only abide in his love if we do what he commands us. Just as your spouse is not going to believe that you love them if you sleep around on them, God is not going to believe you when you say you love him if you're not obeying him. If you reject his law, you don't love him. The Apostle John, the same one that wrote the book we just looked at, said this, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. And he that claims to know Jesus needs to walk as Jesus walked. Jesus kept the commandments. Why is the Sabbath so important? Exodus chapter 20 verse 12 says, It is the sign that God sanctifies us. A few verses later in the very same chapter, it says the Sabbath is the sign that God is our God, that we belong to Him. So if we're claiming that the Sabbath is no longer needing to be kept, we don't belong to God, and we're not being sanctified. In Psalm 119, the psalmist says that God's law, the Ten Commandments, are eternal. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Now Jude tells us to keep yourselves in the love of God. John the Beloved says that the love of God is to keep his commandments. And they're not grievous, they're not a burdensome yoke that we cannot keep. Through the grace of God, we can keep the law, just as Jesus did. Now I want you to notice something here. Revelation 14 verse 6 calls verses 7 through 12 the everlasting gospel. This is the same apostle that wrote 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, the book of John. He also wrote Revelation. And here, he quotes in verse 7 from the fourth commandment here. That means the Sabbath, the true weekly seventh day Sabbath, sundown Friday to sundown Saturday, is a part of the everlasting gospel. And according to Ezekiel, it is because it is the sign that God sanctifies us and that we belong to him. So those claiming that we don't have to keep the Sabbath, that it's been abolished, are preaching a false gospel. Even the very last chapter of the Bible says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to enter into the tree of life and enter in through the gates into the city. So those who refuse to repent of the claim that the law of God was abolished, they're not entering into the city. They're not going to eat from the tree of life. And God doesn't want that for you or anybody else. That's why he's giving the world time to repent. Because he loves you. He loves us, all of us. Now, according to Hebrews 9, a covenant or a testament, today we would call that a will, is of no effect until the person who made it dies. And after you die, you can't change it because, well, you're dead. So if Jesus was going to change the Sabbath, he would have had to have mentioned it before he died. And there's no mention of that anywhere before he died. Now as far as Acts 15 is concerned, again, we have to look at the context. Here in verse 1, we're talking about the law of Moses. Because again, many of the Jewish converts and many of the Jews who professed faith but only wanted to see the gospel fail were saying that you had to keep the law of Moses to be saved. So when the apostles said, Acts 15, verse 10, they were speaking of the ceremonial law, not the Ten Commandments. So when the Jerusalem Council handed down this decision from verse 20, there was nothing in it from the ceremonial law except dietary laws. In fact, if we look elsewhere in Paul's writings, we see he says things like this about the Ten Commandments. I had not known sin except by the law. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. And speaking of that, everything that describes God in the Bible also describes the Ten Commandments. God is all of the things in the middle column. The Ten Commandments are all of the things in the middle column. Because the Ten Commandments are His character. So claiming that the Ten Commandments were abolished simply is not biblical. Do we keep them to earn salvation? Absolutely not. Do we preach them so that we can have salvation by works? Absolutely not. So why do I preach the Sabbath so much? Because this text shows us the exact same truth as this text right here. The Sabbath shows us salvation is only by grace and we cannot earn salvation. If you're rejecting the Sabbath, you're trying to earn salvation by your works. True salvation by grace will be manifest in obedience to this commandment.